All right. Uh, welcome to church this morning, wherever you are. Welcome to church. Welcome to worship here at Calvary Church. And as we used to say, the church is not in the building. We're not gathered together as uh, the church, like when we're gathered together with that church, but we're the church everywhere. And that's been more true than right now. So welcome to church. Welcome to worship, especially. Uh, just have a few quick things to say. Um, I finally was able to participate in the Zoom uh, prayer meeting before church, and that, if you have time, is well worth it. For me, it's just really nice to see other people before church begins. Uh, there are some people here, as uh, if you saw the opening shot, you can see that, but um, we just want to say welcome to everybody wherever you are. Uh, we are going to continue in our sermon series today in Ephesians, and Pastor Heather is preaching that message. And uh, we're being led in worship by Une and Elvin. Thank you for continuing to serve, not only in front of the camera, Une and Elvin, but especially behind making all the technical things work. Uh, like I said earlier, that is a huge gift uh, for our worship. If you get a chance, maybe during the greeting, you can text Elvin and distract him from trying to run the soundboard back there if you have his number or Une. So uh, we're going to gather in worship. The passage I want to read is from Ephesians, and this is our prayer as as we gather. It's from uh, this prayer that Paul prays for his people. Uh, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for those of us who believe. And that's our prayer this morning, that we would experience that, that hope. Maybe we don't have hope. Maybe we do have hope. But we pray that you'd experience that hope to which he has called you, the glorious inheritance of those who believe. So uh, with that, let's hear the announcements from John and greetings from Pastor Heather and other people. And then we'll get right into a worship song led by Une and Alvin. Hey, good morning, church. It's me, John. Good to be with you here uh, this morning, whenever, wherever you're watching this. Um, just a couple announcements for you quick. Uh, one is a virtual connection card. There's a link on our YouTube and Facebook uh, video things. You can connect with us, prayer requests. Um, we'd love to connect to you in any way. So please check that out if you haven't done that before and this is your first time watching or your 70th time watching and uh, you just have something to share with us, that'd be a great way to do it. Uh, another thing is uh, there's a group called Poets that's starting this Sunday right after the church service. Hannah Vincent and Matt Jewett are leading a conversation about evil in the world and um, we'd love for you to be a part of it but we'd also love for you to tell Hannah if you're interested in coming to that um, so please get a hold of Hannah Vincent the details are in the bulletin I believe so you can check that out and let her know if you're interested in doing that today or in the weeks going forward um, another quick reminder is the experience Ephesians that we are in right now you can get a, a guide uh, to learning about Ephesians on our website, you can download it a couple spots there um, and uh, learn more about what's going on with that. Also, just wanted to highlight greeting videos. Uh, we love seeing your faces and uh, seeing each other every Sunday morning. So if you have a greeting video, you haven't done one yet, uh, please submit one to Pastor Heather or send it to me or, or Elvin. One of us uh, would be awesome. And then um, if you have questions about how to make that happen, please talk to one of us too. We'd love to help. Uh, get you on a video if you're not able to do that yourself so uh, please talk to us about that that would be awesome uh, but read your bulletin there's more stuff in there for you today but i uh, hope you have a great week see ya god has greeted you now receive greetings from the church family hello from the potter family we miss seeing you and hope you're all well have a great sunday bye hi calvary church we're john and joanne or joe vantland it's kind of like a plane that can't land, only it's van land. We moved here from New Mexico about probably a year and a half ago, and we started attending Calvary Church and liked it so much that soon afterwards we joined. So uh, we like to get to know people. We like to be involved with things. So we hope that we can just really get to know you and we're gone camping some of the time, but that's how life is when you're retired, right? We really appreciate all the ways that Calvary's tried to keep us connected during this time. So thank you, Calvary. Looking forward to getting to know more of you. Thanks for everything. Bye. Bye. Hi, Hi Church. Church. From Lance and Delaney and Milo. We love you and we miss you and we'll see you soon. Bye.
darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in Let's pray for a moment. Father, you are the King of Kings, and we do worship you. We ask that as we worship that you would fill our hearts, fill our lives, fill the space that we're in, whether we're here at church or at home or somewhere else, fill the space that we're in with your spirit so we could worship you. We ask that we'd see you as a King of Kings over all of our problems, not just in theory or in abstract, but in the reality of the difficulty of our lives, that you would be the King of Kings, that you'd be the Lord over, over everything that seems to be the Lord of our life. You be the God of our lives, of our nation, and of our world. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' most holy, most glorious name. Amen. Amen. 
Well, I have a few things to share, and then we'll uh, go into prayer. On the sharing category, there's a couple of profession of faiths coming up. And next week, Caitlin Vincent is going to make profession of faith right up here. And uh, looking forward to that, Caitlin. After that, Shane Guthrie is going to be baptized and make profession of faith kind of all packed into one, also right up here. And if you don't know Shane, you will in a couple weeks. And his number is also in the directory. Uh, I think it's even right now, but you can get a hold of Shane. Uh, Shane's a neighbor of John and Donna Fisher and has been uh, part of the fellowship here really for a couple of years, probably starting with a dinner, but um, yeah, it's really, it's been really great to get to know you and looking forward to that in a couple weeks. The offering this morning is for Calvary's Ministries and then Bethany Refugee Services. If you want to learn more about that, you can do a lot of things really, but among them you can find the video for Bethany Refugee Services by Bethany DeVos on our YouTube channel and hear about that. Uh, they've been doing great work for years and we want to continue to uh, support them both financially and in prayer, especially at this time. So uh, thank you for that. In terms of prayer for people in church, we want to continue to remember uh, Linda Wimhoff, who's still in the hospital. And I asked Sean this morning how she's doing, and this is what you did, right? Not, not great, uh, not super bad, but we want to continue to pray for her. Uh, there's other things in the wonderful prayer emails that go out and in the bulletin that goes out. Let's highlight a few things that I heard uh, this morning, and that is that Steve and Janet Wieda, Steve's mom was in the hospital, and while she was in the hospital, his dad fell and broke, I think his hip, if I have that right. So it's just a lot of, uh, a lot of prayer needed for them and for Steve and Janet as they pray and take care of them also. I think Donna Fisher's in Chicago taking care of her mom and uh, many people are taking care of other people. So just please pray for that. Uh, Kay DeYoung this week mentioned that her grandson has COVID. He's doing okay, but we wanna pray for the family there. And I was talking to Kay and she's doing great. This is Kay DeYoung. Um, but she just liked to get out, you know. <laughs> She's like, I like to see people. So I want to pray for her in that as well. Um, there are many more things on their prayer email that gets sent out. And I just want to encourage you, if you haven't availed yourself of that, to uh, take the time and pray through that. Also, I haven't highlighted this in a while, so I'll do that. There's still a Zoom prayer meeting before church, and it's still really meaningful and good. And for me this morning, just seeing people before church uh, was just really nice. I mean, it's good to see you all here right now, but we have to come in a little late. We can't talk that much. So uh, it's just really, really good. If, uh, like Steve said last week, if you are desirous of coming to church and it feels like it's not that dangerous for you personally to be around other people, we want to encourage you to come. And uh, someone asked appropriately, what do you mean? Are you trying to get us all there? Or are you trying to have it? Well, we, we have room for more people is what we're trying to say. And you're welcome to come if that's something that feels safe to you. Uh, someone asked, Marva asked this morning, when is, there, when is things going to get back to normal? When is this going to end? <laughs> uh, we have no idea. So uh, next year, maybe sometime. But we're going to continue um, following our God together. Uh, the only thing that is certain in this time of uncertainty is that it's a time of uncertainty, but God is not uncertain at all. And we're just grateful for that. So grateful for that. I keep thinking of my uh, dad in particular who went through World War II and everything changed. And uh, God is God throughout. And we are so very grateful for that. This morning, I should say something about children's worship in case you missed that. We're not doing children's worship in church, but uh, we're gradually developing this uh, video to show before church, and we're showing it at 9.45. This morning we showed it at 9.45. It's getting a bit longer, so we're going to start showing that at 9.40, so we have a few more minutes for announcements. So if you have kids or you just want to see that, uh, it's going to be at 9.40 next week, and it's also available on our YouTube site after the church service as a standalone video. So um, I think that's it. I could ask anybody here if they have any prayer requests. Good, and uh, we're going to go to God in prayer using this wonderful uh, email that Pastor Heather sent out for week 28 of prayers during a pandemic. So let's go to God in prayer. Father, you are our Lord, you're a king. 
Uh, you are the God of everything. As Psalm 46 says, you are a refuge and strength, our ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the news people continue to talk about this, that, and the other thing, and everyone around us descends into anxiety. Lord, we will not fear, because you are our God, you are our rock, you are our king, and you invite us in the middle of the storm to reflect and say, be still and know that I am God. And you are, and we are grateful for it. We, grateful, we are grateful for you being the rock in our lives in the past, and we are grateful for you being the rock in our lives in the present. Lord, no matter what the obstacle, no matter what the anxiety that's coming our way, I pray that you would be our Father in heaven. I pray that you'd be our Father here on earth. We give thanks to you, God that you are with us, that you are God with us. We give thanks for the Holy Spirit who ministers to us in our weakness. We give thanks that you are a refuge and strength. We give thanks for amazing things from Micah Bike profession of faith, professing faith, to Caitlin and Shane professing faith in the future. We thank you that Lucille Ankeet is 92 years old or young, as the case may be. But we thank you for Donna McGinnis's birthday today, I believe, and we ask that you be with her too, of course. Um, we thank you for students who have access to free breakfast and lunch, and we thank you for students who are getting through school uh, one way or another, and the teachers, the amazing teachers who are teaching them. But we thank you that we respond to our prayer. Lord, we do grieve for sickness, for death, for loss. And we grieve with Roger and Sue and the death of Roger's mom, uh, Jean, who passed away this week. And we give, uh, we, we, uh, we grieve. So many of us have people in our past and people aren't talking about it anymore, but there's a hole in our heart that we miss them desperately. And we grieve, Lord, we're honest with you, we grieve. Lord, we lament, uh, kind of a fancy formal word for saying, we cry out to you about, we lament. We lament uh, all the things that have happened this year and this year of 2020 that uh, none of us saw coming. We lament the coronavirus. We lament that large portions of the West Coast are on fire. Uh, maybe not like percentage-wise, but there's just massive amounts of fire out there. Uh, we lament that storms continue to drench the coast of our southern states. We lament that in the midst of this global pandemic, uh, real people are losing their loved ones and their lives, and that it is hard, Lord. We lament the political confusion and uh, just conflict that continually springs up, especially in our country, this election side. We lament it, Lord. We don't have solutions, Lord, but we lament it. Uh, we lament discrimination. We lament that there are the haves and the haves nots. We intercede for you. We ask you as our Father, as your daughters and your sons, we ask that in spite of the fact that it's uncertain, the future is uncertain, we ask that you would indeed provide a way out of this particular coronavirus situation, that you'd be with the researchers who are researching vaccines. That we ask that you'd be with the people who are close to our heart, who are part of our fellowship here, whether formally or informally, we pray uh, for uh, Linda that you would bring healing to her, that you would be with her and Dave, that you'd be with Sean, that you would answer our prayers, Lord, and give them your presence, give them your healing. We ask that you'd be with Roger Smith, who's still in the hospital doing rehab. We ask that you'd be um, with people that are, whose lives are just massively affected by this coronavirus, and uh, their schooling is affected, their way they teach is affected, their jobs are affected, Lord. We pray that you would be our God in the middle of this, and we pray for unity. Lord, it's so easy to get upset, to uh, pull out the anger voice and the anger disposition and get frustrated with people, whether it's online or in person. Lord, we pray for peace, we pray for unity, and we pray for you to be the God uh, that's involved in the details of our nation. We pray that you be with us as a, as a witness, as the body of Christ, and help us to be the united people of God, following you, uh, following you first of all, no matter what our affiliations are. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of all hope. And we ask that you would fill us with hope as we worship this morning, as we live our lives this week. And we pray that as we come to those valleys, those pitfalls that appear in front of us unexpectedly, um, unbeknownst to us, and all of a sudden it just is an invitation or a situation in which we can descend into hopelessness and 
lose sight of what we know to be true in other areas of our life. We pray that you would be there with us and provide a bridge over it, provide uh, your helping hand out of it, provide a detour sign that says, don't go there, go around. We pray that you would be with us in the middle of whatever obstacles in our way and that you would be the God of all hope and guidance, perseverance, and sustaining grace in our lives. Lord, you are our Father, and we ask that you'd walk with us. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's like we said uh, a couple times earlier, we are in a sermon series on Ephesians. There is the Ephesians Challenge Experience Ephesians that's available online. I think there's at least one copy back there. If you move real fast, you can get it on the way out. But uh, for everyone else, it's online. You can print it out, or maybe I'll even be able to print those while we're worshiping this morning. Um, Pastor Heather is, is, uh, is going to preach for us this morning on Ephesians chapter 3, so I welcome you to open your uh, Bible to that in a minute. And it's about the church. So Ine and Elvin are going to lead us in this song, The Church is One Foundation, uh, before Pastor Heather preaches. After, after the sermon, um, we'll hear a song, and then Pastor Heather will close it out also with uh, a blessing. So um, blessings to you as you hear God's word this morning. church is one foundation is jesus christ her lord she is his new creation by water and the word from heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride with his own blood he bought her and for her life he Hi there, church family. We continue our sermon series on the book of Ephesians, inspired by Watchmany's book, Sit, Walk, Stand. And as I mentioned in the kickoff the, uh, to the series, the first three chapters are about sitting in our identity in Christ, learning to embrace who God says we are. Chapters four and five are about living out that identity. How do we be image bearers of Christ in the world? And chapter six addresses how as, as imitators of God in the world, we're gonna face trouble. But we do not have to um, be fearful because we can take a strong stand against the enemy and his schemes with confidence. 
Today we are in chapter three, still in the sit section, but there is an emphasis today on community, on the church, on how to embrace our identity in Christ as a community of God's people. Now, the Apostle Paul mentions mystery. The first three words of our chapter today are this mystery is. He's been talking about mystery and now is the big reveal. And there's two words that I want you to think about as I read the scripture passage from Ephesians 3. First, the word together, repeated three times. Why is that relevant? And then the words through the church. What is the Apostle Paul saying to the Ephesians and to us? What is the message for us today? Hear the word of the Lord from Ephesians 3, beginning at verse 6. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. I became a servant of the gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am the less the I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So each Monday, John Quist posts a brilliant picture of John Van Land's collection. And usually John Van Land, uh, this is on our Facebook page, our Calvary Church Facebook page, and usually John Vantland offers a devotion to go along with it. And this past week's picture was of these Phoebe birds. And of course I saved the picture and sent it to my daughter Phoebe. It's just not that often you get to see Phoebe birds. And in his devotion, John imagined, John Vantland imagined the the metaphor of the church. He noted that these two birds were sitting right next to each other. They had 30 feet of deck railing, but they chose to sit right next to each other together. And if you'll notice, one's looking one direction and one's looking the other. John imagined that they had each other's backs. And it was kind of like this image of the church, looking out for each other, taking care of each other, having each other's backs. I personally would like to imagine that one of those birds is a Republican and one of them is a Democrat and they're right there side by side at peace together. Well, our scripture passage today has context and it's important to understand the context. In the Old Testament, Jews are God's chosen people. God says to Abraham, Genesis 17, 7, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you to be your God. And then in Deuteronomy 7, 6, we read, God has chosen you, you Israelite people, you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. And much of the Old Testament captures the relationship between God and his people and how he is in the process of teaching them how to have a relationship with him, how to be a people, a chosen people of God in relationship with him. And he gives them 
laws to follow. He tells them, don't be fraternizing with all those other people. Don't be looking at all those other nations and becoming jealous of them or envying them or wanting to be like them. You Jewish people keep your eyes on me. Listen to me, follow the guidance I have given you and then you will be living the good life. Learn to trust me, learn to have faith in me. And, and God is very patient with them and, and long suffering and he brings leaders and, and the Israelites do what humans do. They decide they wanna go their own way and, and do what everybody else is doing. And then there's, there's um, conflict and they turn away from God and, and they, they are exiled and then God brings them back and they restore the relationships. And this goes on and on and on for, for you know, years and years and years and years and years. Well, enter the, the time of Christ in the context of our, our scripture passage today. We have a Jewish people who have always known that they are God's chosen people. They are God's precious, special community. Um, we have what we think of as remnant theology. God has always preserved a remnant of the Jewish people to be his people, and it has withstood the test of time. Paul uses the word mystery six times in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 1, 9, he says, God made known the mystery of his will, which he purposed in Christ. Okay, well, that's still a little bit opaque. What's, what's Paul talking about? Well, our text is the big reveal. Paul tells the Ephesian people that God's saving grace, the grace that they've known to be for the Jewish people since the beginning of time. God's saving grace is for both the Jews and the Gentiles. Our scripture text reads, Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, sharers together in the promise of Jesus Christ. Not, um, come alongside, uh, receive second best. Um, now they get to, to, you know, have a little extra together. They're on the same level. Jews, God's chosen special people, and now Gentiles, everybody not God's chosen special people. God's grace, Paul is telling the people, is for all the people every single person, all of the people. Well, the Jews must have thought, huh? But we're the, we're God's people. What do you mean they're God's people too? That we're equally God's people. How, how can that be? It, con it counters everything they've ever taught and learned and believed and generation after generation after generation has practiced and now the Gentiles, everybody not us, are also going to inherit the goodness of God the, the, and they're on equal footing. And then Paul doesn't just stop there. He doesn't just say, okay, you know, isn't that great? He says, and it comes with this joyous privilege, this, this grace that I've been given to proclaim the gospel. You get to do this too. He tells the people, the Ephesian church, it's going to be through you. This gracious message is going to be brought to the world through you, the church, together, the people together. Well, that must have sounded outrageous. How would these little gatherings of diverse people, people from different cultures and ethnicities and lifestyles, from various faith backgrounds, some of them having practiced uh, Judaism for, you know, till they, all, all of their, their history, to people who were, just came to faith, have never been religious, together, are going to demonstrate this unity 
this single message of God's saving grace to the world. How are they gonna do that? They don't have a cathedral. They don't have a Vatican. They don't have social media. They don't even have a church building. They just meet in little houses. They're Christians gathering with little pockets of people that you know they know. How are, how are they gonna do this? Well, fast forward 2,000 years and Paul's message to the Ephesian church holds today. The church remains the mechanism to spread to the world the message of Christ's extravagant love and grace for all people. How are we doing? How is the church doing with that? When people outside the church look at the church, what do they see? Do they see love and unity and grace? One commentator I like to read says, the gulf between Paul's description of the church and our present experience is embarrassingly large. The us and them divide that we see in politics and social structures and relationships everywhere have found its way into the church. Too often we're more interested in dividing lines and identifying what separates us and drawing lines in the sand rather than in the united and fundamental belief in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So it's not a surprise then when young adults who identify as gay or lesbian or transgender find their way into our home and are surprised to discover that I am both a pastor and welcome them with open arms. That is not a testament to my gracious hospitality. That's a comment on the church. The face the church has shown to our LGBTQ brothers and sisters is not a message that says you are co-heirs with Christ. That is not what the church leads with. In some ways, our Colossian Way groups at Calvary are a response to this scripture passage today. If the church is the mechanism through which the world will learn of this extravagant uni unifying gospel of grace, then we need to equip the church to be one people united with Christ in the midst of our beautiful differences. And the Colossian way is a, an equipping ground, a training ground. We get to exercise being united in Christ in the midst of our differences. In our groups, when we meet at church, we intentionally practice together how union with Christ has supremacy over all things. We name it, we speak it out loud, and we demonstrate it. Different groups address different topics, uh, creation, evolution, sexuality, and now politics. And in the political talk group that meets right now, we, we um, talk about things like uh, uh, medical marijuana and police violence and healthcare and gun control and immigration. We look at political ads, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives. We, we talk about that stuff that's so divisive in our world right now. And we could easily add masks, social distancing, mail-in ballots, hot topics that are so divisive amongst us. Testifying to the gospel truth of God's grace through our unity in Christ 
doesn't come naturally. It takes work. It takes intentional work. It's not just a good idea. It's something we have to learn how to do, practice, exercise, and grow muscles at. Interestingly, every meeting has the same rhythm. We first remind ourselves why we're there to gather, practice, and witness. And then we uh, have an interactive prayer for guidance. And then the best part, someone shares their story. As a group, we listen to each other. And as we listen, we enfold that person within our, into our hearts. In those moments, political positions and theological interpretations fade to the background. A person is sharing a piece of their story, a piece of their soul with us. And we receive it without condemnation or judgment or finger pointing. Through listening to each other, our love and acceptance for one another grows. We kind of fall in love with each other a little bit. And the church is strengthened. This global pandemic has brought us to a watershed moment in the life of the church. How is God inviting us to reshape ourselves in such a way that we look more like a church who makes known to the world the gospel grace of Jesus Christ for all people. And all means all. In the passage that follows the one that we read for today, Paul offers a piece of the how this is possible. Paul prays for the Ephesians that they would be able to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. But the, 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 the you, I pray that you be rooted and established in love, isn't singular. He's not praying for them as individuals. It's a plural. He prays that you together as the church could grasp this love of Christ for you together the church. We sit and we receive together this identity that in our vast diversity as the body of Christ, together God loves us and offers us this extravagant grace to pass on to the world. Last week, Micah Bykirk made Profession of Faith. Next week, Caitlin Vincent is going to make public Profession of Faith. And the week after, Shane Guthrie. And one of the questions I asked Micah was, do you promise to participate in the life of the church through mission? I didn't ask, um, do you promise to become an evangelist? Do you promise to become a missionary? The question was, do you promise to participate in the life of the church through mission? Do you promise to demonstrate the extravagant grace of Christ through participation with the church? And Micah's answer was, I do. through the church that the world will learn of Christ's extravagant grace. There's one more piece to that devotional that John Van Land wrote about the Phoebe birds. He said that the image of these birds together reminded him of a song from the 60s. One of the verses goes like this. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity will one day be restored. 
And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Let's pray. God of grace, we acknowledge that we have not always put demonstrating the extravagant love of Christ first. Forgive us. Forgive us for being judgy and finger pointy and exclusive. Lord, may we know your wide and long and high and deep love for us as a church community. Together, may we grasp it. And may this, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, be what empowers us to proclaim to the world this extravagant grace you have for all people on earth. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. time of desperation and all we know is doubt and fear there is only one foundation we believe we believe in this bro He's good.
as a family of God, as a community of believers, we have the opportunity to profess our faith together, to say out loud what we believe to be true. And the Apostles' Creed gives us language to do that together. And when we profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed, we join with people all over the globe, professing these very same words, expressing this very same faith. So let's say this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Following the blessing, there will be sermon reflection questions on the screen for you to discuss with the people that you are worshiping with this morning. And after church, Hannah Vincent and Matt Jewett are kicking off their eight-week series called Poets, Problem of Evil in Today's Society. You're invited to join that discussion. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as you leave this place, you do not leave unequipped or go alone. God is with you and his love fills you to the fullness of him. Receive his blessing as you leave. The Lord blesses you and he keeps you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and is gracious to you. The Lord turns his face toward you and he gives you his peace. Amen. Go in peace.